I have found the best quiet luxury designer bag. I think I might actually be more obsessed with this bag now than when I first bought it. This is a 16 bag from Celine. I'm going to be going through everything that you need to know about this bag, including what fits inside, outfit styling, wear and tear that I found with the bag so far, prices and size options, and my final verdict. Is the Celine 16 really the best quiet luxury bag on the market? right now. Hey everyone, Steph here. Now a little bit of backstory about this bag because this is not the bag that should be stood in front of you today in this video. Oh no. When I went to Celine recently, I wanted to purchase the Teen Triumph bag. Now I tried it on. It's the one with the emblem on the front and it is this square boxy shaped bag. It is all over Instagram right now and it looks sensational. However, when I went to try this on in Harrods, I noticed a bag in the background minding its own business and something came over me. Call it love at first sight if you will. And it was, of course, the 16. The 16 bag is loved by celebrities such as Lady Gaga, Hailey Bieber, and my personal girl crush, Angelina Jolie. Now I really love a good backstory to any bag, so a little bit of history on the 16. The 16 bag was designed by Hedy Sleeman on his first day appointed as creative director at Celine. This bag was first available in 2018 and the design of it was inspired by Celine's headquarters in Paris. And I believe part of this here, we can see the strap. If you look at the windows of the building, I'm getting similar vibes. So that is what inspired the shape and look of this bag and the bag was named after the address of the brand's headquarters and atelier in Paris. Now let's take a quick look before I show you around this bag of the size and price options that are currently available. The smallest size is currently the mini size retailing at £2,600. $3,700 is the mini size. This is the smallest option. The next which is the one that I've gone for is the small size which retails at £2,950. $4,350 in the US and the classic size, this one will be perfect for work, retailing at £3,400, $4,950 in the US. Now let me show you around mine. So again, mine is the small size and I went for the satinated calfskin leather. You can get the 16 in different leathers. The satinated leather is smooth looking, so it kind of reflects the light. I find this is more of a dressy style of leather. You can get grained leather versions of this as well. Grained will definitely last a little bit better in terms of every day. You are less likely to see scratches. And you can also get these in some really beautiful exotics if that is your vibe. Lizard and Croc, for example, but obviously being exotic, they are quite a bit more expensive. But for me, the satinated leather, I think, is the most beautiful. So this is a very simple bag and I just want to appreciate this is very quiet luxury. We don't have a big logo on the bag. The only logo that we actually have, you can see Celine engraved on the hardware there and also on the padlock. So the side of the bag is very beautiful. The back, we don't have a pocket on the back. It is just smooth. And then we do have feet on the bottom of the bag. However, it is worth noting that the small and classic size have the feet on the bottom, but if you want a mini, for some reason they don't have feet on the bottom, which kind of actually put me off getting the mini size. I think the small is definitely a bit more of a contender just for having these on the bottom. Then we have the top handle, but look at these. We also have these additional hoops here, which is really well thought out because you do get a cross body strap with this bag, not adjustable. It, it does have Celine in gold. And when you attach this to the hoops on the top, because it is a separate hoop, it doesn't pull on the leather here of the handle because it pulls out separately. And you might be wondering like myself what this padlock is actually for then because it doesn't actually go on the front of the bag. And it's actually the inside of the bag here with the zipper, put this onto this hoop and then you can attach your padlock. So you can actually lock the zip compartment inside of the bag. Now I'm going to show you what fits inside, try it on with a few outfits to show you what this looks like and then we'll be going through the wear and tear, pros and cons and my final verdict. Okay let's see what fits inside. So again the layout of the bag we have a pocket on the back, just like a slip pocket, a larger compartment, a zipper compartment here and another larger compartment and then we also have another compartment on the front. First let's start with my phone. I am going to put this actually in the slip pocket at the back of the bag there. My YSL card holder. I'm going to put that into the zippy compartment of the bag so that it is 
safe. My car key is here, so I will put them in the back compartment. My Triumph purse here, I wouldn't actually take two out. I wouldn't have a card holder and this, but just to show you, if you have like a little cosmetics pouch, you can still see there's plenty of room inside of there. Can we fit an iPad? You can see this is actually too, too long, so we definitely couldn't get an iPad in here. You might be able to get a mini one inside. Here I have a small book. It is very thin though, but this is A5 size. And if we kind of force the bag, we probably could just get that in, but if it was a thicker book, I don't think we would be able to. So you would be able to get like a very small a5 possibly if you kind of pushed the bag out but i wouldn't recommend it you'd probably need something smaller than a5 throw in a few cosmetics like perfume and powder you could easily put them in there and we still have lots of room left in this bag actually one of the things i really love about this bag is i love taking my noise cancelling headphones with me so when I'm traveling, like on a train, for example, so if I move this into the back compartment as well as the little makeup bits, that frees up the front compartment. And then, as you can see, that is a perfect fit for my headphones. And with a little bit of coaxing, bag closes perfectly fine. And all my everyday essentials and more are now inside. Keeping this look super simple again, bodysuit trousers, this House of Dagmar coat. And then this looks really great with the Celine 16 for a super simple, effortless look. Grab and go, out the house, heels, or you could put trainers on, something like that, if you want it to be a bit more casual. Then the same bodysuit and trousers, but I put on this Karen Millen black beaded top, a blazer, and as you can see, this really goes from day to night with the 16. Have on another winter coat here. This is the Frankie Shop Nicola coat. We have over-exaggerated shoulders, very Saint Laurent-esque. And here it is with the Celine 16. This is again effortless, super chic. The coat is the outfit and the bag is just the pierre de resistance to this look. So I have had my Celine 16 bag for around seven months now and honestly I have used this bag way more than I thought I would do and one of the reasons is because it doesn't have a logo on. I really like the quiet luxury trend right now but I don't think this is a trend. I feel like this is such a timeless classic piece. It really will stand the test of time for many many years. Um, I do have a lot of bags in my collection with logos on and sometimes I feel a little bit unsafe wearing them or I just don't want to wear them. I want to wear something that looks quality, it looks luxurious but you know we don't need to shout about maybe how much we cost it's one of those pieces that if you know you know and if you don't you would have no idea that this is a designer bag and I really like that but wear and tear that I have experienced so far with this bag uh, one of the main ones actually is this padlock I'm not sure if you can see but it is definitely scratched up quite a lot and um, the hardware so far has been okay, but I've only just taken the plastic off this hardware, um, I would say a couple of weeks ago now. So the hardware did come with plastic on and I've just kept it on for as long as possible because I do know this is going to scratch. Another one is that because I went for the smooth leather, this is more prone to scratches and you might be able to see here, there is a scratch already in the leather there. And there is also one on the bottom of the bag there, which I'd say is probably one of the deeper scratches. But other than that, I would say it's actually holding up really well. It's more hard wearing than I thought, but with this style of leather, I always knew I would just have to accept it will get scratched at some point. So I do try to take the most care with it as possible. But again, you can avoid this a little bit more with the grained leather option if you chose to go that way. I've also seen quite a few with a lot of wear and tear on the corners of the bag so far. Mine is absolutely fine. Um, even the studs on the bottom have held up really well. So no issues with the corners of the bag yet. But like I say, when I was doing my research on this, on the pre-love market, you can see some that are very scratched up and damaged on the corners. Pros and cons with the Celine 16 bag. I'm gonna quick fire these. One of the main pros for me, I've just touched on, the fact that this does not have a big logo on. I feel much safer using this piece, especially when I'm out and about in busy cities like London. And the fact, again, it doesn't have a logo, it means you can team it with lots of other designer pieces if you want to that maybe do have logos on and I just find this black and gold combination literally goes with everything. Another pro for this bag I find is how big the compartments are. So they are quite big and also deep. We do have a bit of flex in the structure of the bag. So just to demonstrate my Chanel Trendy, which if you look at both of these bags 
are a very similar size. This is actually a lot heavier as well. But to show you inside, now I do have liners in this bag and we do have some flex, but not a whole lot. And there is so many dividers in this bag that these are actually really quite small and narrow. So you can't get bigger, bulkier items in compared to the 16, which you can see has much bigger compartments for what is a very similar sized bag. Another pro, this bag looks good all the time. It reminds me a lot of the Louis Vuitton Capucine bag in the sense that because it is such a structured bag, we have feet on the bottom of the bag. These are completely empty right now and they look perfect. Like they're not the type of bag that if they have nothing in, they aren't going to look good. So you can just grab and go with them. And even when they are full, they do have a little bit of flex in them, which I really like. The bag is lined with a beautiful soft lambskin, which I think makes this piece feel even more luxurious for the wearer. If this was lined with canvas or something like that, it would definitely feel like a much more inferior piece when it comes to the quality. And the satinated leather for me was a really good option because I feel like I can wear something really casual and this bag makes it look a little bit more dressy, a little bit more pulled together and thought about. And there's been numerous occasions that I've actually worn this bag into the evening. So it works really Really great as an everyday bag and also as an evening bag. Now for the cons that I can see with this bag. One of the things that surprised me is how quickly this has dinted, like the padlock. Um, so much so, I think I probably will take it off the bag and stop wearing it so that it doesn't get any more dinted, but it already looks like it's been hammered quite a lot, which makes me concerned for the metal on the hardware. I'm going to try and find some hardware protectors or try and make some because once this is all scratched up, I don't think there'll be any going back. And I already knew this before I purchased it, but they are prone to scratching. So so I am a little bit upset about my scratch on the front of the bag, like you can actually feel it as well. It is raised on the leather. There'll be no getting that out now. And I think if you do have this bag, really think about the leather option that you do decide to go for. You can also get these in a veg tanned leather. What that means is, so about 90% of leather on the market and leather bags are chrome tan leather. I learned this recently because I made my own bag. It was so much fun. I learned so much. Chrome tan leather is where you have a piece of leather. This is top grain leather. And then it is covered maybe in like, like a plastic, you never really know what they've covered it with, um, but basically to protect it and give the leather a consistent finish. Veg tan leather has not got this coating on top. It has been tanned. What that means is they can scratch a lot more easily, um, but again, they are so beautiful. So it really depends on what your priorities are. My final verdict, is the Celine 16 worth its price tag at nearly 3,000 pounds in the UK? I can't even believe that I'm about to say this. Since these are both similar bags, the Chanel Trendy and the Celine 16. But bear in mind the Trendy retails at nearly double at what the Celine 16 costs. This one retails now at nearly six thousand pounds in the UK for the small size. Do you know which one I would buy? I would buy the 16. I have not stopped using this since I purchased it. For me, it really makes sense. I think it's such a gorgeous bag. I get so many compliments on it. Honestly, I have been in other brands as I'm buying other pieces. And when I've taken this bag with me, they end up being like, oh my gosh, your bag is so beautiful. I've had that quite a few times now. It feels premium, it looks premium, and it is timeless. This for me is a no brainer. I 100% would add another one of these to my collection in a heartbeat. So there it is. I think I have found the most perfect quiet luxury designer bag. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now make sure you don't go anywhere because over here I have nine of the best classy everyday bags that ooze timeless elegance. Enjoy.